Hello guys, I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Jess. We talk a lot about timeless capsule style around here and basically making your wardrobe work for you. If you're returning, then welcome back. Maybe you fancy a little bit of a vlog here and there as well. We throw those in sometimes too. But today's video is going to be my designer bag collection and basically talking you through how much I paid, where I found them, whether I feel like it was a worthy investment, whether I'd maybe repurchase, or if it's a bag that I slightly regret buying. Now, all of these bags have been collected over many many years and I saved up quite a bit of money to buy them. I was very kindly gifted one or two of them which I'll talk you through as we go through this video. However, had I not been gifted they still would have been bags that I chose to invest in because I use and wear these all the time. So if you go back and check my other content you'll know all of these bags get bought out quite often. There's a couple that maybe don't get bought out as much but for the most part they all get worn fairly regularly and I really you know, have a well-rounded collection that are thought out and well loved. So without further ado, I think it's time to grab a cup of tea and get cozy and we'll get into the video. I think the best way to do this is in order of purchase because I could do like cross bodies, shoulder bags, tote bags, etc. But I think purchase order might be a better way to do this because it might just make it a little bit easier and make it flow a little bit better for me when I'm thinking about, you know, all of these different bags that have come into my life in one way or another. So the first bag I actually got will come as no surprise to anybody. I think this is probably going to be an expected first bag if you've seen my videos before. And that is my vintage Gucci bag, which if you've listened to my podcast or seen my content before, you will know this is my absolute pride and joy. I love this bag so, so much. It's honestly my best purchase ever. And this bag cost me £120 on eBay. If you would like to know the full story, I'll leave my YouTube video down below and in the cards sharing how I source designer products, how I find good vintage bargains and all that kind of thing. But this one is very loved in my collection. She gets bought out all the time. And to be honest, I actually need to give the leather a bit of a treat. But I genuinely use this all the time. It's a really good size. Name wise, I'm not entirely sure of the name, but what I'll do is I'll leave the code down in the description box for you because sometimes they pop up on Vestia and like various other resale places so you maybe can get your hands on one. Just obviously be really careful to make sure that you are buying a legit copy using the authenticity tips in my other video. But yeah, really gorgeous bag. It goes with everything and I would say this is probably the bag in my collection that I am the most proud of and the most fond of. I just really, really love it. I love the fact that it's like 2008, so it's very like noughties vibes. I love that it's really hard to get hold of. No one really owns anything similar. Very one of a kind, which is kind of what I like in a bag. I like finding bags that are maybe ones that other people don't own or are a bit harder to get hold of. A couple of these are kind of trend ones, but for the most part, I really enjoy a bag that is one that I know that not many other people own. And I think this is gonna be in my collection for a very, 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 very long time. And hopefully if I ever have a daughter, I can pass this down to her and she will equally enjoy it. But yeah, really, really gorgeous bag. And I love that this had a life before me. I love that it was bought lovingly by a husband to a wife. She really loved it, but could fit it into her wardrobe so it got worn on a couple of special occasions but I love that it had a really special meaning and it was bought for a really nice purpose before it landed into my hands. I would say the monogram pieces are definitely worth investing in if you are quite timeless and quite classic with your wardrobe. They seem to go with pretty much everything and I think that is kind of the main reason this one gets worn quite a lot. I love that it's the darker tones, I love that it's the browns, so it can just mix and match really easily with everything that I own. Now, I'm not sure exactly which one came next, but there was two that came very close together, and I am gonna go with this one first, and then we'll go for the other, because I think that's the order I got them, but like I said, I'm not 100% sure. So the next one is my YSL Spontini bag. This is gorgeous and I picked this one up at Bista Village a couple of years ago. I've got a vlog actually from when I was buying this and I just fell in love with it the second I saw it. I knew it had to come home with me and this one was only £800 I think or 700 and something. I can't remember exactly but it's in that vlog and it's a beautiful suede saddle bag with the long strap. The strap actually does go shorter as well which is perfect because I can wear it as like a little shoulder bag if I want to. This one, I have to admit, as much as I adore it and as much as I think it is honestly the nicest bag ever, it doesn't get worn as much as the other bags in my collection purely because it's suede. Now, I've protected it, it's had lots of love and care, but I'm so terrified of wearing this in the rain or like getting any marks on it or anything like that that she doesn't get worn as often. However, 
I'm trying to get better at wearing it because it is such a beautiful bag and I think that it could have such a lovely life if I stopped being so precious about ruining it. Um, so I think that this year my aim is to try and bring her out a little bit more often and give her a little bit more love but they do also sell this in a black suede and I believe they also have some other slightly different variations of it but again I'll leave all the names of the different bags down below if you want to have a little look because this one for example where I got it from Bista is older season so again you can only get this one second hand. I've only ever seen one other person with this bag online and it was an influencer in America and she has great style so I'm liking to think that I have great style too but I would say this one is on the scale of bags that I regret and I'm really glad I invested in I would say this one kind of sits at a midpoint purely for the fact that I don't wear it very often however I do think that I need to bring her out a little bit more so I think she's going to be working her way back up the ranks and as I said that one only cost me 700 to 800 pounds whereas brand new or even just on vestiaire and stuff I was seeing them at the time for like 1700 so saved myself a pretty penny there and likewise with the Gucci one that cost me 110 pounds when I had a look at the product code about a year ago they were on resale platforms for about 900 pounds so made a really good saving on both of those and I like to think of them as like investments because they are quite hard to get hold of they're really rare styles now but I know that I could resell them for more than I bought them and they're in pristine condition so I think they are very good investments into my wardrobe then next up we have a basket bag which is the Loewe one that everyone and their wife seems to own I need to flatten this bit back down it's been in my wardrobe and it's like got a little kink going on but this is just the classic medium sized basket bag all of these are slightly different in variation. So you can see this one, this side's a bit straighter than that side. That's purely because these are handcrafted. It was about 300 pounds and I bought it brand new from Selfridges. So did pick it up brand new. Probably, I think this was my first ever like brand new designer purchase and I do really love it. However, I think that I would have rather got the black leather or the white leather but at the time they didn't sell the black and the white leather, they only had this colour or like the bright coloured basket. So I got it at the time because I really loved it, I know the colour works really well in my wardrobe, however if I was to go back I think I would go for a slightly different colour variation. But I am hoping to invest in some sandals that are kind of like a dark, a dark tan colour or like a light suede vibe just so I've got some shoes that go with it because I think that's my current issue is I don't really have any summer sandals that match it but I do really love it and it comes on pretty much every single trip with me so it's been well loved I just think I would have maybe worn it a little bit more if it had the black or the white leather however really stunning basket bag and I have never invested in another basket bag since because this is just the only thing I need, like every holiday this comes with me, it always gets packed for the summer. It's great for just going out and about or going to the park or something if I'm going to like just chill out with friends. Great for shopping, like honestly I, I do love it and I do wear it a lot. But I do think that £300 for a basket was maybe a little bit excessive. I was in a spendy era and now looking back on reflection, would I have spent that much? Maybe not. However, at the time, because I bought this in, I want to say 2018 or 2019, I loved it and it was really worth the investment. But I do love her. I do really, really love her. But yeah, she is a worthwhile investment. I would say this is probably, out of all of the bags, I would say this one's probably a 6 out of 10 on the do I regret her or do I love her vibe. Now it's not to say that me giving these negatives means that I am ungrateful for buying these bags. I'm so thankful and grateful that I had the money to buy them and that I could afford to get them for myself. I just wanted to be really realistic because I don't want you to think that spending all this money is like the best purchase ever. Sometimes it does take a little bit more consideration and sometimes it's okay if you spend a lot of money on something and then you maybe don't wear it as much because like I've already said, you can resell for a higher price or the same price and you could buy something that you equally love or you know, just find new ways to wear things. Now the one thing I really do want to get across is I am in no way ungrateful for any of these bags. I really love them and I'm really glad that I bought them all but I just thought I'd be a bit realistic because some of these bags I have spent quite a bit of money on and I wanted to give you a well-rounded opinion on what I think of them and whether I would now spend that money on them or whether I maybe should have held back and got something a bit different etc because I think every time you spend money especially on your wardrobe and going through your 20s it's really hard to know exactly what's going to fit your style as you get older I'm super grateful that a lot of these have been in my wardrobe for I think the oldest one is 2017 or 2018 but a lot of them have been in my wardrobe for a really long time and I do still wear and love them all the time like all of these get worn 
very regularly apart from the seasonal ones and the suede one which I just mentioned because I'm terrified of ruining her but anyway let's get on with the video the next one that I got was this one which is the Giacomus Le Chiquito Node Node Nude I don't know how you actually say it but I picked this one up in the middle of the Giacomus hype and I needed a really good classic black bag because I didn't own one and I thought rather than getting a cheap one that's going to last five minutes let me just invest into one that I know that I'll wear a lot and I'll really love and trust me this bag has been loved she gets worn a lot and it comes pretty much everywhere with me I love this little ring detailing I think it's really cute I also love that it's a crossbody so I can either use it as like a little hand like grab bag or I can wear it cross body. It does fit quite a bit in, it doesn't fit my iPhone, I have the big iPhone. However, I can easily fit like my vlog camera, my cards, my lipstick, etc., in here really easily. My camera did just die, so apologies if the angle has changed ever so slightly. But as I was saying, this bag does fit quite a bit in it. I really like the style and they do do, in the Le Chiquito styles, they do do bigger ones and they do smaller ones. I did have the smaller one which I was very kindly gifted by Farfetch but I have now passed that on to a new home because it was just too small and it never got used. However, this one I honestly use all the time. There was a solid two years where I don't think I used any other bag. Now I do have another black bag that also gets mixed in sometimes but this one is still a classic and still has such a special place in my heart because it's so blooming cute and I just absolutely love her. I think that one cost me roughly about 500 or 600 pounds and I bought it directly from Giacomo's website. It took about a week to turn up because it came from France but including customs and stuff it actually ended up cheaper than buying it over here so I picked that one up for roughly that much. I know they don't hold their value but I just don't think that bag's one I'm ever going to get rid of. Like I think out of all the ones I've showed you so far the Loewe one is the only one that I would consider selling in the far future. The others definitely staying in my collection forever. Now the next bag might come as a surprise, might not, but I did actually pick up the Giacomus Le Chiquito in white and this was a bit of a risky one for me because I didn't know whether a white bag would fit into my collection really well, whether I'd wear it a lot, whether it would be something that gets ruined really easily. Like I just, I wasn't sure but I knew that I wanted a white bag because I think white bags are just a classic and this is the regular Chiquito style so you haven't got like the curly strap, it's just the sturdy one handle. Very, very nice bag, exactly the same size as the other one in terms of like the size of the actual bag really really cute and I have to admit I have actually kept this in pristine condition I wear it quite often and she's got no marks on her I am very wary when I'm out and about to like not put her on the floor or put her like anything like that if I'm out in a restaurant I'll put it on the table or I'll put it on the chair with me just because I don't want to get it ruined but even the crossbody strap is in really good condition this one is fab if I am going for like an occasion so I've worn this to a couple of weddings various like summery events and stuff and it works really well with quite a spring summer wardrobe however it does get worn a lot into the autumn winter and this one and the other one like the black one I'd say am I quite like everyday kind of bags but they also add a bit of smart casual so they do get worn quite a lot this one I got in a collaboration with Farfetch so they gave me a percentage towards it and then I paid a little bit extra I can't remember exactly how much I paid in total but the bag was about 500 pounds again and I think I paid about 200 pounds of it so I did pay about nearly 50% of it and I really really love it and I think it's a gorgeous investment bag I think the Jacquemuses have kind of had their moment of being a trend but I wouldn't necessarily say that they're a bag that's going out of style. I think style is whatever you make it, if it fits into your wardrobe and it goes with what you own, then absolutely it's something to have. I personally still wear these a lot and I think I will continue to still wear them for a while. Jacquemus is a brand that isn't really going anywhere. They seem to just be going from strength to strength. Different products keep coming out that people are seeming to love. There's like different basket bags and stuff that they've come out with that are gorgeous, but I think these are just a really good fail safe, smart, casual, easy bag if you are looking for something that will just go with everything and I really love them. I, I do have to say I thought this would be a big regret. There was a couple of times that I debated sending this back because I was really worried about it being white but I've kept it in really good condition. It's been leather treated and it's also just really easy to wipe as well so if there is like a little makeup hand print like around the handle or something I can just really easily wipe it off. But yeah very very cute little bag and I love that it's got the gold hardware as well. Then the next bag is a Fendi number which I'd had my eye on for so 
so long and I didn't add with a pre-sale website called Closet Porter and they kindly gifted me one item from the website which I'm so thankful for because honestly it's just gorgeous and I really really love it. So it's just the classic Fendi baguette bag. Now I've got the pretty classic colourway and it's so blooming cute. The only thing I will say about this one is it's really hard to show because it's obviously fabric so I don't I don't have anything in it at the moment. I probably should have stuffed it with something but this one's a really cute one for every day. Love the colour of it. I I think this retails on secondhand websites for roughly around about I want to say between six and nine hundred pounds but I could be wrong it could be more it could be less I don't actually know but really really cute and there's so many styles of these I really like this colorway specifically but they also do do darker ones so you can get a more kind of darker brown darker brown strap vibe which is equally as gorgeous i would absolutely be on the hunt for one of those as one of my next bags they're on my list i love the fendi bags like this so 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 much and i think they're just a classic so we've got one on the wish list for the future but this one does get used quite a lot specifically in spring and summer not so much in autumn winter because of the colors of it but i do really love it in the spring and summer months it's adjustable so we can just adjust the little straps and stuff at the top if i really wanted to i probably could put another strap on to make it cross border Body, but I quite like that it's a little shoulder bag very vintage vibes and I just I think it's so cute this one I would say is probably out of all of the bags up there with my most worn like I said for spring and summer this the Loewe and the Gucci get worn a lot at that time of year to be fair all of these get worn quite a lot like they all do actually get worn pretty often but yeah really really cute and just a classic like she's so She's so diddy and cute and I just really like it. I'm really glad that I got this one and I'm so grateful that it was gifted. However, like I said, I was on the hunt for one of these already and I am trying to find a darker version because I just think they're a really gorgeous brand and I think they hold their quality really well. They hold their price really well and just a really good staple to have in my wardrobe because it fits everything that I own and wear. Okay, the next bag is a bit of a special one because this is, like I said, the only bag that I bought full price and I have a bit of a story with this one. So I was heading to LA with one of my friends to go to Coachella and to go to like LA, Palm Springs and stuff. Dream trip for me because I've always really wanted to go and I just, it was a very spontaneous last minute trip. We literally planned it all like two weeks before we went. But this bag was on my wish list for a really long time and I knew that I wanted to treat myself to something for my 30th birthday. I basically said to my friend, if we get to the airport, if there's one in the airport, Louis Vuitton, then I'll buy it. If there's not, then, you know, we'll go home and I'll have a think and I'll like make the decision of the bag that I really, really want because they're quite hard to get hold of. And I just thought like, if I can buy it on that trip, that makes it extra, extra special. But if I have to get it when I come home and wait a bit, like that's also fine. And it's the mini Palm Springs little backpack. Now, I love this bag. I use this all the time and I'm actually surprised by how much fits in this. They did have it at the airport. So basically we walked in and the woman said that there was one in stock. Someone had literally just tried it on and said that she didn't want it. She was going to come back for it, never did. So she was like, we have one if you really want it. And I was like, yes, absolutely. I need it. So I picked it up and I got it. I have got both straps for this, but I wear this crossbody quite a lot, which is why we've currently only got one attached. You can obviously wear it as a backpack. I've seen people loop through those two and wear it like hanging as a crossbody, or you can literally wear it like a cross shoe. But I honestly adore this bag it fits so much in there my kindle fits in it i actually did an unboxing of this where i think i did show what fits inside so i'll leave that link down below but it's such a gorgeous style really high quality really beautifully made um and i just honestly it's one of my favorite investments ever and i think because it was my 30th birthday present to myself it's even more sentimental and these actually have gone up in value as well which is great because i know that it's a good investment not that i ever plan to sell it but i just know that they hold their value really well louis vuitton are also i think quite known for for being good for like treating bags if you have anything that goes wrong or if they get a bit scuffed or anything I think they're pretty good at helping you out but yeah really good quality really gorgeous and I absolutely love this I I can't really rank the bags I started trying but genuinely I just love them all so much and I really really am glad that I bought them the only one like I said that I have slight regrets is the Loewe because of the color and the YSL bag that I showed you but purely because I don't wear it enough. So all of them are going to get a bit of life and I thought by doing this video, it would kind of reignite my spark for them, tell you some stories, tell you where I got them and just, you know, basically take a trip down memory lane of my bags. But yes, this one is a baby that I absolutely love. She cost me, I think it was like an extortionate amount of money, actually a disgusting amount of money. I think it was like 1,600 and something, which I would never now spend because I'm so much more 
like money savvy and I like to hold on to my money now. Last year and previously, I was a bit frivolous and I used to spend so much money. I didn't really care about savings, but I am very glad that I got her because she's very cute and I really like it. And it's so sentimental to me and it means a lot because I got it on a trip with my friend, a dream, dream trip of mine. And also it was my cute little 30th birthday present. And then last but not least, we have a little bit of a wild card. This one is one that doesn't get bought out as often, purely because I need to like fabric shave it. And that sounds, until you see it, you're not gonna understand that. But this one is a little bit of a harder one to wear more often. So it gets taken a lot on holidays and it gets taken a lot if I'm like going somewhere where I need a bigger bag, but for every day it's a little bit too big and it's this JW Anderson tote. Now this is divine and I love it. So it's like a really nice like felted wool felt vibe. Got the embroidered logo on the front here, all black, beautiful black detailing with the white stitching and stuff. So, so, so gorgeous. But as you can see, it's a very big tote bag. So it doesn't get worn as often as I would like and it does need a good little fabric shave. But that's kind of the beauty of this one because I think even though it is fabric, I can shave up all the bobbles and it will look brand new again. It doesn't come with an insert inside. However, I think I might, to wear this a bit more often, I might get one of those inserts that you get on Amazon, just get a plain black one with the compartment, pop that in and then it should be good to go. Because initially I was gonna try and find a black leather one, but I think that could work just as well. But yeah, it does come on holiday quite a lot as a like cabin bag under the seat bag. Not so much if I'm traveling just with that, but like, you know, sometimes when you're on the plane and you just want like your snacks, your drink, like phone charger, headphones, laptop, etc. Like this is a really good one to take. It gets used quite a lot for a work bag as well. If I'm going to work in coffee shops or if I'm going to the beach or something, but she's a bit of a wild card, but she's very, very cute. And I think I'm not sure price wise, but I think these are about 195, 200 pounds. And I just thought it was a great bag to get because it is just a really classic black tote. Gonna be useful for so many things in the future. And I do love JW Anderson as a brand. I don't own that many things from them, but their bags and their shoes, I just absolutely love. I wish I could invest into more of it because it's gorgeous. And it's a brand that I check quite often for secondhand bits because I just think they have some really gorgeous stuff. Especially they have um, these mules. I have a dupe of them that are from Warehouse and they're like black with a big chunky chain across. I look for those so often online to find a secondhand pair because I love them. They don't sell them anymore, but they were about 400 pounds brand new. My dupes are great. They are slightly falling apart now, but I really want to invest in those when I find a good secondhand pair, so they're on my list of things to get. But yeah, that's the final bag. But that's it for today's video, guys. I really hope this gave you some inspiration of bags that you maybe want to invest in. Maybe it made you think more about the things that you already own and how you wear them and what you wear. I know for me looking at these that I really wanna start getting out the wire sell bag a bit more often. I'm excited for the fact that spring summer is really coming so I can wear the basket bag and the tote bag a little bit more. And I just think, if you're gonna invest in things, there's no shame in that. I think what you choose to invest in is completely up to you. What you see as a bag or a product that will fit really well into your life is totally personal preference. We all have different styles, but to me, these are really timeless. And I actually weeded out 99% of other bags that I had from high street places, etc because I just thought I don't need any more than what I've got here. Like these are all pretty good. The only other bags I really have are my Songmont ones, which I absolutely love. You guys know I love a Songmont tote and my little shoulder bag. And I also have like the dumpling Uniqlo bags or like a random, you know, like a tote crochet number that I got in Bali. So very, very minimal other bags in my life. And I just, I really like them. I think they're, I think they're gorgeous. And I think they are a very well-rounded collection. So hopefully this video gave you a little bit of fashion inspo for this lovely day <laughs> but if you like the video guys don't forget to give it a thumbs up subscribe hit the notification bell for more from me let me know if there's anything else that you would like me to do videos on that is similar to this and i'll see you in my next one goodbye guys Bye.